What is up guys? Welcome to the comfort zone. Happy New Year. It is 2020, a new decade in the books. New year, new me. Let's get it. announcement really quick I mean I guess you can call it an announcement but starting hopefully within the next month or so I'm going to have a new channel I'm still gonna have the comfort zone this one but I'm gonna have a secondary channel that's going to be called beyond the comfort zone and in that channel I'm going to have a little bit more of my crazy adventures I'm gonna do a bunch of traveling this coming year and I've got to document all of that and I'm just gonna be doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff and I'm gonna take you guys along the way with me so keep an eye out for that hopefully you go subscribe get give my video some likes and follows and it's gonna be a lot of fun so I'm really excited for that so don't forget to follow all my social medias I'll have them listed at the end of this video as well as in the description down below you can keep up with my everyday to day life I post mostly on Instagram but I'm also on Twitter a lot I do have a TikTok. I'll make sure to post that down in the description as well um, I have Twitter I have snapchat and I'm pretty active on social media but if you really want to keep up with me make sure you follow my Instagram but without any further ado let's get into the video so in this video, I'm going to be doing my top five faves of 2019. And <laughs> it's funny that I decided to start this channel this year because 2019, I didn't read nearly as many books as I usually do, but it just felt like the right time to get it started. So I'm still going to talk about the top five favorites that I've got. And some of these are series, not books. That's why I didn't say top five favorite books, just my top five favorites, because some of these are series and trilogies. So we're going to get into that. But because I didn't do as much reading this year as I have in the last couple of years, it was kind of hard for me to pick some of my top five favorites. There's not really any order in which I'm going to talk about these with you. They're just as I pick them up, I'm going to talk about them. So the first one I am going to mention is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I picked this up at Walmart and I just came across it. Every time I go to Walmart, I always check the books because I seem to find some of my favorite books at Walmart of all places. And I came across this. And the funny thing is, is as soon as I purchased it, I started seeing a whole bunch of people reviewing it on YouTube. I saw it all over Instagram. I saw it all over Twitter. And so it was like it was meant to be after I purchased it. And this one is my most recent read. I'm actually not 100% done with it. I've got like three more chapters left, but I loved it. I've been loving it so much that I knew it was going to make it into my top five unless the last three chapters completely throw me off, which I highly doubt. It doesn't seem to be going that way. But unless the last three chapters throw me off, it's definitely in my top five. And the reason that I picked this up is because Erin Morgenstern is also the author of a book called The Night Circus. Now, I haven't read that either, but I've heard so many good things about it. It's on my list of two read books for 2020. I'm really excited about that story. I've heard, like I said, I've heard so many good things and some of my favorite book reviewers have been obsessed with that book. So I figured this book hopefully was going to be just as good. And I absolutely loved it. So if I love this, I have high hopes for the Night Circus. Now this book is just so full of magic and fantasy and romance and mystery and action and it's just everything I would ever want out of a fantasy story. So from the first chapter I was hooked and the way this book is written, so it's got everything it's kind of hard to explain but every other chapter is different one chapter will be an insert from a book that this book is actually written about this is a book 
that's written about a book if that makes sense so one chapter will be an insert from the book that this is written about and then the next chapter will be about the main character Zachary Ezra Rollins and his adventure with the book um, his situations that are going on and so you get to really see what he's reading about why he's so intrigued with this book and then how he goes about taking action as to what he's going to do about it like I know that's a terrible description but I really don't want to give anything away because I want like I said I want to save it for a uh, for another video but it's so intriguing it's so intense it's so beautifully written and I just love everything about this book and I am thrilled to put it in my top five the next one in my top five is actually a trilogy by Kelly Armstrong it is the Darkest Powers Trilogy. It starts with The Summoning, then The Awakening, and then The Reckoning. And the funny thing about these is that I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard of these before. I'd never heard anything about them. I just came across them at the bookstore that you guys have heard me mention in the past. I always go there not expecting to find anything and I always come out with wonderful things. And the reason I got this is because it's one of the only books I've been able to find at this at the store that has the entire series or trilogy together. Usually I'll find like book two and five or one through three but doesn't have four, five, and six, you know what I mean? But these had all three of them together so I immediately snatched them up and it's a young adult fantasy like that is totally my thing. It's been my thing all year. I, you're, you're gonna notice a pattern as I'm going through these books. Young adult fantasy has just been my ish this year and these really fell into that category. But... <sighs> When I got them, I assumed, because they were like wrapped together, I assumed that they were in order. So I read them in the order that I found them in. <laughs> and they weren't in order. So I actually ended up reading the second one first, then the first one, then the third one. And I didn't even realize it until I started reading the second one that I was like, okay, wait a minute. Something seems a little backwards here. I'm getting... I'm getting parts of the story that now finally makes sense because when I when I read the second one the first one that I read it was it was still really good like I obviously wanted to keep reading it but it did feel like I was missing something some things just didn't make sense and then once I started reading the second one then I was like oh huh I think I'm reading these out of order so I looked it up and sure enough I read the second one first but Nonetheless, I still absolutely love these stories. They were dark and creepy. Like these are, even though they're young adult, there were some parts in these books that kind of creeped me out. Like I was sitting on the edge of my bed, my feet dang dangling off reading and I like pulled my feet up from dangling off the bed because I was like, ooh, that's kind of creepy. Like <laughs> I can't be the only one that does that. But so yeah they do get kind of creepy for a young adult and I like that like it's very intriguing it's very mysterious I mean and I'll admit there are some parts a lot of it is very predictable I mean it's a young adult story that seems to be kind of a theme in a young adult story it's kind of predictable but I don't mind that to a certain extent because it's still very satisfying for me to read um, I fell in love with all of the characters in this in in this trilogy and I'll probably end up doing like the first one that I just talked about I'll probably end up doing a second video just dedicated to these ones alone because I love them so much but I highly recommend this trilogy if you are into like myself you're into like the vampires the werewolves the necromancy if that's your kind of fantasy these are going to be right up your alley they are so good I'd recommend to anybody even if you don't aren't a huge fan of fantasy there's something for everybody in these books so I highly highly recommend hence why they are in my top five next two that I'm going to be talking about are books that I've done videos on separately so you're more than welcome to go check those out I'll make sure to leave all the links to any videos down in the description below so you can check them out but the next one is Dead Set by Richard Cadry now again young adult fantasy like I said there's a theme to this video but this book I absolutely loved 
and I mentioned this in the review that I actually did on this book this book gives me mad Coraline vibes like it's just a completely different world that the main character goes into and she builds alliances and friendships as she's still trying to save herself as well as save her family. It's very adventurous. It's kind of dark. It's kind of creepy. There is a very strong sibling bond within the story and it's very family oriented and I loved that a lot about the book. And there's actually a quote from another author on the back of the book that I absolutely love. I feel like it explains this story better than I ever could. It says, if punk and underworld mythology got into a mosh pit, it would come out of something like this. Spiky and pretty with lashings of black eyeliner and its heart tattooed on its sleeve. And that was by Lauren Bukes. I think that's how you say her name. Lauren Bukes, who is the author of um, The Shining Girls. I just absolutely love that because music does have a big part to play in this story. It's very punk rock. It's very almost emo, I guess, I guess you could say. But I love that about this because that's a flash, a little bit of a flashback for me. <laughs> um, but I definitely recommend it. Like I said, it's a young adult story. Quick read. I, I loved it. I'm sure you're going to love it too. So definitely check it out. Dead Set by Richard Cadry. Now the next one in my top five, Elevation by Stephen King. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. Look at it. I absolutely love this cover. But other than that, Stephen King is one of my all-time favorite authors. He's my favorite writer. I love all his movies. I love all the books. Everything I've ever read from Stephen King has left me 100% satisfied. So I was expecting nothing less from this. So this is a novella. It's not a full novel, but it's also not a short story. It's like right in between. So that if anybody was ever wondering what a novella is, that's what it is. It's not quite as short as a short story, but it's not long enough to be considered a novel. So it's a novella. Now I have done a review recently on this one as well so again I'll link the video down in the description if you want to go check that out but again this book was so beautiful it was so emotional it was very heartfelt it was I feel like this is something a little bit different than what I have read from Stephen King in a long time it is one of his if not the most recent release that he's done I think it was released October of 2018 if I'm remembering correctly so it is pretty recent from Stephen King it's based in the town of Castle Rock and as we all know Castle Rock is a big thing in the world of Stephen King. A lot of his other stories have taken place there so of course this one had to be taken place in Castle Rock as well which I loved because it still goes along the lines of the kind of mystical fantasy things that happen in Castle Rock. This fits perfectly into that kind of scenario that he created for the town. And I just, I highly recommend it. I sat down and read this in like an hour, hour and a half tops. It was so good. I loved everything about it. The characters, the relationship between the characters, the plot points and the twists in the story. Just, ugh, everything about it. I loved this book so much and I am so just... I will forever read this book. I will read it a million times in between books that I can't figure out what I want to read. I'll just pick this up and read it again. That's how much I loved it. So 10 out of 10, highly recommend. If you're a Stephen King fan and you haven't read this yet, what you doing with your life? Pick it up, read it, check it out. And last but not least, my final series for my top five. Oh, the Fablehaven series by Brandon Mull. Now this series is something that I read back in junior high. Well I actually didn't read the full series back in junior high because I think when I first read it only the first two or three were released but I loved them so much. It was such a nostalgic read for me and then knowing that there were more books to the series I was like heck yes 100% absolutely. And the thing about this Brandon Mull the author he is from 
my home state. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. He is from Utah. And I remember back in junior high, part of the reason why I read these is because Brandon Mull actually came to my school in junior high. He came to my junior high school and he did an entire assembly about the importance of reading fantasy and just his history of why he started writing, why he chose this to write. And it was just a very eye-opening thing for me. It really... It was one of the things that made me want to get into reading more. I was that kid in school. I wasn't getting my phone taken away. I was getting my books taken away. So I've always been a big fan of reading. But after getting to meet Brandon Mole, hearing what he had to say about the importance of reading and his love for fantasy, it just made me want to read so much more. And so this series has a huge importance to me. And so when I picked them up and started reading them again this year, I was still 100% satisfied, 100% in love with this series. Um, it is, again, very young adult. It's closer to the young, young spectrum, I feel like, in the young adult realm. I don't care because I absolutely love everything about these. There are five books in the series. Book one, oh, let's see these are so big and I have little hands. Okay, so book one is just called Fable Haven. Book two is Rise of the Evening Star. Book three, Grip of the Shadow Plague. Book four, Secrets of the Dragon Sanctuary. And book five, Keys to the Demon Prison. And oh my goodness. And I, I couldn't tell you which one was my favorite because I loved different aspects to each and every one. I... Oh, this, I, I did this one last because it was probably my number one. It's, it's number one for a reason. I absolutely loved everything about this book. It's so books, sorry, not book, books. It is so heavy in fantasy and magic and just everything you could ever want out of a fantasy story. You have this here. I mean, there's even some, and <laughs> As I'm sure you've figured out if you've been watching my videos, I love the dark aspect that fantasy can give. And these books even have that. I mean, it's not super heavy like some of the other books I've talked about and some that I've read, but there is still a dark touch to some of the things that happen in these stories. And a lot of the characters are so relatable. Like Kendra, she is one of the main characters throughout the series. And I relate to her on a deeper level, even though she is like 12, 13 years old my 12 and 13 year old self was inside screaming because of how relatable she is but also her little brother Seth who is again a main character I also relate to him on a deep level as well it's just like the two main characters come together and they create me like <laughs> that's how I feel when I read these stories it's so beautiful it's so magical it's relatable it's just everything I could ever want out of a fantasy story and I can't say that enough absolutely amazing i loved these books these are something that i will keep and i will read throughout the entirety of my life i will read these to my kids i hope my kids when they're old enough to read that they will pick up and read them and i just hope that they find as much love and magic and beauty in these as i do because these books will forever mean the world to me before I end the video, I do have a couple of honorable mentions that I want to talk about for a quick second. They are books that I read and that I really enjoyed but weren't quite up to the level of these top five that I read. But I still love them enough that I feel like I wanted to talk about them. So the first one is Dark Fall by Dean Koontz. It's so reflective you can't see it. <laughs> and I really like this book and I unfortunately have a love-hate relationship with Dean Koontz and I know I'm probably going to get some lash back from that but there have been some Dean Koontz books that I've read that just bore me to tears and then there are books like Darkfall that I absolutely loved. It's a sci-fi fantasy fiction that is just from the from chapter one to the last chapter it is just so intense and it keeps you in, it keeps you involved it keeps you wanting to read and there are really good character relationships the verbiage in the book is really good and I just loved reading it I had a really good time reading it I really recommend it if you're a sci-fi horror fan definitely check this out Dean Koontz Darkfall 
And the next one is Chime by Franny Billingsley. Now this book, I'm not even sure what genre this can be placed into because I found it in the young adult section, but I feel like it is not young adult for a couple of reasons. One, the language in this book is definitely not young adult friendly. I mean, maybe 18, 19 year old friendly, but not like young, young adult friendly. And another reason is it was kind of hard to read, not because it was boring or uninteresting, because it's definitely a good book, but the verbiage that is used and just the rhythm that the author chose to write this book in, it can get kind of confusing. Like I found myself a couple of times having to reread a paragraph or even reread the last couple of pages because I found myself lost like okay wait what what happened what's going on but overall it was still really good it, again it's a fantasy story of course um it is about witches is the best I don't want to put I don't want to go too much into it because I'll probably do a video about this book but um it the main basis of the story is about witches. It's got a very Salem witch trials vibe. A lot of the same thing that happened during the Salem witch trials happens during this and I want to say it takes place during the same era. I'm not 100% sure though. I'll have to look into that more but it's very intense but it's also very beautiful. It's very intriguing and it was not at all predictable. A lot of books like this uh, that I've read I have found are predictable. This one not at all which I actually really enjoyed. I was shocked by the end of the book as to the outcome of how it ended and so I found that to be a very intriguing aspect of the story but because it was kind of a harder one to read it didn't quite make it into my top five but definitely worth a mention if you if you're into like the Salem witch trials definitely check this out I liked it a lot highly recommend and last but not least my final book in the honorable mentions conversations with the fat girl by Liza Palmer now I just have to say I had no idea Liza Palmer was a producer for BuzzFeed like when I found that out completely blew my mind when I was reading this I had no clue so when I found that out it was it was kind of cool and it kind of put some things together for me <laughs> but I thought that was kind of cool but this book has some sentimental value to me just for the fact that this was the first book I ever reviewed for this channel. And the reason I chose this to be my first book to review for the channel is because of how much I related to it. I am clearly a heavier set girl, which is totally fine. I own it. I live it. But it was very, it was kind of a hard one to read just because, like I said, I related to it so much, but it was also very inspiring. It was very triggering. It was very emotional, but overall, I loved reading the story. It got slow at some points, but that doesn't matter. Sometimes that happens in books. It was still 100% worth the read. I absolutely loved it, and I highly recommend that you check it out and go watch my video first video I ever uploaded. Make sure you go watch that. Again, I'll leave the link in the description below and go check that out. 100% worth the read. 100% worth watching the video. Well, that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've read any of these books, if you have any of your own opinions on these books, comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you have any book recommendations that you think I might like, because obviously you have a kind of a good idea of some of the books that I'm into, I am more than willing to hear what you have to say. I'm always looking for new books to read, so if you have any recommendations, please leave them down in the comments below. I hope everyone had an absolutely amazing new year. I hope you stayed safe. I hope you got everything that you wanted out of 2019. And I hope that 2020 is an even better year for you. I hope the next decade brings you everything that you could ever want and more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time here at the Comfort Zone. Bye.